First of all, thanks to Carl and Sharon for inviting me here to give my lecture. Um, secondly, my name is Heiko Cornelissen. I'm a project architect at Stephen R. Architects. Together with Stephen, last year we were teaching at Columbia University and gave a studio called Architectonics of Music. Um, in this studio, we explored different connections between architecture and uh, music. Um, accompanied uh, uh, by the studio was a course given by uh, Raphael Mastel, who were teaching the students the basics of uh, classic um, modern music. Um, they, he also helped them choose, pick a piece of music that would be linked to, to architecture. Um, this framework of combining architecture with, with music and exploring different connections, obviously, uh, very similar to the framework that uh, Le Courger and uh, Xenakis uh, explored. One of the, uh, well, part of the research that we did was um, to, to look, uh, of course, at the work of Xenakis and, and Le Courger. Um, one of the projects that we visited was the convent of uh, La Tourette. Um, in the south of France, which was also the first uh, project that Senakis did as a project leader at Le Courbet's office. Um, one of the famous examples of how music uh, was related to architecture in, in this specific building was the west facade, especially these two facades here, which presented Senakis a, a very architectural uh, challenge of how to distribute the mullions, the uh, vertical support, over this, uh, this uh, large uh, glass facade. Um, he used a technique that he also had uh, used in, in some of his, uh, his pieces uh, that he composed uh, using the, the golden section in, in order to distribute uh, different uh, points uh, in, in time. So in this case, he used the golden section in order uh, uh, to, to place the different vertical mullions, which are uh, uh, the same height and the same uh, 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 dimension each time. But because of the, the placement um, based on the golden section, the, these different densities emerge. Um, the, different panes of glass start to vary in height and, and width and, and generate this uh, beautiful polyrhythmic uh, kind of facade that the Courbouchier referred to as uh, the musical panes of, of glass. Um, when we were there, we did not only see the uh, uh, beautiful building of uh, the convent of La Tourette, uh, or, but also we saw and heard um, the of Roy and orchestra um, not perform. We were not on time for that, but uh, we, we saw them rehearse and heard them rehearse in the building, so we experienced a, a, um, a very immersive, it, it was an immersive kind of experience where it, we could see how powerful uh, the connection of architecture and music could be, and, and added to that, we heard music uh, performed by Christophe Roy and also heard uh, some of Xenakis' pieces. So this experience set a um, sort of benchmark for the students. Um, when we were back in New York, we gave them the site where they should uh, decide. We gave them two sites, two potential sites. One. Uh, well, both are in Brooklyn, close to uh, Pratt University, which we designed, well, Stephen Hall Architects designed. Um, so it's a very urban kind of setting. We gave them uh, the exact program uh, for the Music uh, Education Center with 300 seats auditorium. Um, uh, and one, uh, there's, there were 12 students. Um, each two students uh, were combined and and, and created one uh, project. The first one uh, of the three projects that I want to show you is made by Roche Espinoza and Dalia Roberts, which was called Space Written in uh, Space Written in Rhythm. 
Um, they used a Conlon and Carlos study uh, number seven. Um, they used the, this graphic representation, uh, which is an overview of the, the tempos in the piece. And they almost literally translated this, this 2D graphic into a 3D space. Um, they analyzed the different um, uh, characteristics of the space. They, they, they say, this is a, a slower space, this is immediate tempo, and this is uh, fast space. Um, the tempos, uh, they, the difference in tempo, it, they, they put it on an axis of increasing tempo from uh, bottom to top. They added the opacity um, on the horizontal bar, and this created a, a, um, a field where they added the program on. Um, so uh, they, they linked the, each program to the opacity and tempo that they thought was suitable. For example, the auditorium has um, uh, a lot of privacy in there for a little uh, opacity and little tempo. But for example, the offices were thought um, to, to be able to make it more transparent and accelerate the, 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 the tempo. So I'll show you a little video that they made with the music of Len Carroll um, with increasing tempo and how it's related to the, the spaces that they imagine. So in section, what this group had done was organized the, the, the increase of tempo um, going from bottom to top, increasing in speed. Um, if you look, for example, at the auditorium, which is below grade, um, there's just one tempo um, generating this the experience of this space with more uh, abstract spaces. but. As you go up, uh, for example, here, these are the rehearsal rooms. Different tempos are combined and uh, are accelerating in, in space and experience. Um, and, but also programmatically, um, program is being combined. For example, the vertical circulation is combined with the, the rehearsal rooms. Um, so that's also what you can see in the, um, the physical model uh, that they made where there's um, slow tempo at the base with increasing um, um, tempo going up. Um, the second project I wanted to show you um, was made by Samuel Brissett and Manolis uh, Stravakakis. Um, they uh, created a harmonic composition of light and they used uh, John Cage's uh, 49 waltzes um, for that. Um, 49 waltzes is Basically, a, a large number of um, of dots placed on the New York map, um, uh, which basically represent um, his interpretation of harmony, which is an experience of the different sounds existing at the, the same time. Um, Sam and Manolis use that same kind of experience um, 
or multiplicity of experiences by designing a, a circulation um, through a building where they linked different uh, experiences uh, together. Um, so each program was given a, a different uh, kind of experience, um, but also within each program and within each space, uh, each space would change over time. Um, this is just one space, but because of the, the, the changing position of the sun, each program um, and space would, uh, would, would change. Um, they used um, a stacking technique, very simple way of uh, adding concrete blocks on top of each other. And, and with that simple technique, they filtered the urban sounds and lights in, in various ways, matching the, the program and the effects that they wanted to achieve. Um, so for example, the, the auditorium has large, much larger um, uh, uh, concrete blocks, whereas, for example, the circulation here is much thinner. Um, uh, uh, blocks filtering the, the sound and music in, in very different ways. The entrance, obviously, is uh, sort of opening up. Uh, it's a very e almost introvert kind of a building that uh, only at the entrance opens up and invites you in. So in the lobby, the experience also more more light and also allows more, more urban sounds to enter the, um, uh, the space. Whereas, for example, the auditorium, uh, much larger blocks are, are being used to uh, produce the space and um, uh, much less light and, and, and sounds enter uh, the experience. So the circulation through the building sometimes becomes uh, part of the space. As you can see there, uh, sometimes it goes through the blocks. Um, so they, they tried to, within this uh, almost uh, very introverted building, they, they tried to vary uh, uh, the experience going all the way up to the, uh, to the top of the, of the building. Uh, the last project I want to show you is the Faced Spaces of Jay Shaw and Adrian Smith, who used uh, Steve Reich's uh, drumming. They um, used uh, the technique that uh, uh, Reich also used, um, which is the, the facing, which is a displacement in time of similar musical lines, creating a gradually changing uh, harmonic effect. So they made a diagram out of, um, out of this musical piece where you can see three lines um, which are faced and, it, and finally, it creates a harmonic effect where sometimes you, you, you only experience one of the lines, sometimes all two lines, sometimes three. Um, so over time, it's a very different kind of uh, experience. Here you hear Steve Reich's music drumming. lines of music were translated into three types of program, audience, performer, and, and composer, which is also going from uh, more public into a more private kind of program, which were then um, uh, merged into each other, creating a harmonic effect uh, organized uh, uh, vertically. Um, so the, the comp there's this composing um, line, um, the, the performer and the, the audience, um, both are also structurally uh, independent. 
um, and it goes from a, a more public uh, frontal view, which is related to the audience, um, towards uh, the performer and finally the composer, which has a much more um, introvert um, and uh, closed off experience also because it's uh, connected to the tissue of uh, urban Brooklyn. Um, but what is interesting also here is that you can see uh, on this facade uh, just one program and in the other facade you, you see all three merged uh, together. Um, and if you look at the, the programs and spaces themselves, what is interesting is that, uh, for example, the auditorium, you, you can experience the, the three different layers um, within within that one space. Uh, but you can also close off certain space, as, as they've done here, where you can only perceive one, one layer. Um, something similar happens at the auditorium uh, uh, lobby, where you're standing here. Um, and, and see the, the voyeur coming, uh, sticking through and, and invites you in. Um, also, the, the gallery lobby, you can see the different spaces and different um, uh, faces, uh, basically, um, in, in, in one space. Um, and also, uh, the urban fabric sometimes pops through um, in this space to, to make you uh, aware of the, of the, the, the surrounding and the urban context. Uh, and finally, the, the, there's another gallery, which is a very compressed space, uh, which has a very horizontal kind of experience, where you can also see uh, different faces um, at one time. So first, uh, the Xenakis, Le uh, Courbuchet uh, example, where a proportional system was used to create a, a new kind or new, new types of uh, forms um, in 1960. Then last year, uh, Boucher and uh, Dalia, they used a graphic representation and was literally translated into a, a 3D experience. Um, Sam and Manolis uh, used the multiplicity of experiences that they took out of uh, uh, their, their musical uh, piece and, and made that uh, architecture. Um, also the use of uh, uh, the urban experience was brought into uh, the architecture and uh, the architecture then is filtering the, um, the urban sounds and, um, and urban light. And finally, uh, the technique of uh, facing uh, you could see that in the last uh, project. So there's within the um, the realm of uh, uh, connecting architecture and music, uh, where the Courbet and Xenakis uh, operated in. There's a huge potential for um, uh, all kinds of uh, connections, uh, of which I only uh, showed a few. Um, but in future, it's worth. Um, experimenting with it and um, uh, let's see what what happens thank you